Hey all, here OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick hands-on look at the CRE C1 Mini Projector. This was a budget portable projector that sells for under 70 bucks, so relatively inexpensive. It has a pretty cute appearance that might convince you to think it's more expensive, and the price would suggest has kind of a leather handle to it, and you can take it with you. It has stereo built-in speakers. It connects using HDMI, so you can plug in any laptop, also use a conversion cable for smartphones, and weighs less than 1.3 pounds. It is worth mentioning, though, that because, again, the price point here is relatively low cost compared to, say, a Pico Pocket projector, this one here is using a more traditional LCD LED bulb, so it's still going to be a little larger than some DLP Pico projectors we've seen in the past. Although the input it supports is up to Full HD 1080p, the output that's coming out from the bulb is only around 360p, so it's by no means going to be a super pixel dense or high resolution image. In fact, this is really meant just for very quick clips on YouTube, things you want to project onto a ceiling and, you know, can watch in the dark. It's about the same size, in fact, as about two cans of Coke. That's how it's advertised, or soda cans. Gets up to 100 inches diagonally on a wall or ceiling. As far as the features are concerned, it does have a rechargeable battery, will last for a little under two hours before you need to plug it back in. It can also work when it's being charged, of course. And there's also an optional model that has Android OS built on in, which allows you to view back videos, uh, browse the web without even connecting to anything. It would be an all-in-one unit, although that sells for more. Inside the box of the C1, we have the projector itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. Otherwise, we also have the AC adapter for charging. It looks like this. I do wish it would use a standard, maybe micro USB or USB Type-C, but it is what it is. And there's also an included full-size HDMI cable as part of the box, which is a neat little accessory. And there's also a quick user manual. Taking a closer look at the design of the projector. It is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic, which feels relatively sturdy and solid. The handle here again is made out of this leather material, makes it look like something that would sell for much more than the entry-level price. There's a simple power key on the very top, and then on the back here is where we have all the ports, including charging, auxiliary 3.5 millimeters, if you don't want to use the built-in speakers, and there's also the full-sized HDMI, and even a USB input, so if you have a thumb drive, you can also load it back with media files, and it can play it back directly. And this is what it looks like on the base. There's some soft-touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on the table, and there's also a standard tripod mount if you want to mount it to be a little bit higher and project it at the wall. Uh, always a nice Touch. And finally, the top here in terms of the lens, it, the focus can also be adjusted using the dial on the top here. So it's a manual focus to adjust the sharpness depending on how far away you are from the wall. But overall, it works quite well. It doesn't have a lens cover though, so if it gets dirty, remember to wipe it off. But otherwise, pretty compact and easy to take on the road. The plastic, by the way, doesn't feel cheap either, surprisingly, compared to some of the other low-cost budget projectors that we've seen in the past. It doesn't feel too hollow. It actually is a pretty solid weight. And overall, definitely looks the part. Let's take a quick look at the performance next. So here's what the projector looks like. We have a virtual screen size right now of around 40 inches and still looks decent with a little bit of background light, but it's not going to be as good as if you turn all the lights off. Uh, so now you can see how the image quality will definitely still be presentable. Although if you do zoom in, you can still make out a bit of pixelation, as you can see there. It's by no means, again, the highest sharpness. Uh, but overall, just for, again, casually watching back some images and videos, it still does all right. The interface here allows us to do things like playback videos directly loaded onto the USB thumbstick or look at photos, uh, or you can select the HDMI or AV sources optionally. In terms of the settings, it is pretty basic. You can change the mode to have a higher contrast, as well as the aspect ratio color temperature can also be adjusted, including reducing the display size if you want to kind of manually zoom in and kind of crop the image. If it's uh, too large for the wall that you're trying to project into, it has kind of a digital zoom and crop function. So let's take a quick look at the HDMI functionality here just by jumping into that source. Um, of course, it'll be inputting it at full HD, but again, the output is not going to be uh, quite as high since, again, the native res supported is around 360p, so technically even a little lower than regular SD quality, which is 480. Uh, so it definitely will notice some pixelation as we zoom on in. But again, colors do look slightly more vibrant than maybe what you'd expect from something so small. It has improved a bit, I'd say, compared to other low-cost LCD projectors that we saw in the same price range a year or two ago. So if we play back a quick video clip here, sound is coming out through the speakers of the projector right now.
right, so turning the volume down, a few takeaways is the quality of the speakers is actually quite good. In fact, I'd argue that it sounds better than maybe even the picture quality itself, a little ironic, but it is a stereo speaker, it gets plenty loud, and for playing back music even, and while we're watching videos, it fills up the space, actually sounds kind of cinematic, has a good stereo separation. Image quality is also okay in terms of the contrast, but just not the sharpest thing in the world. Uh, but for things like, again, YouTube videos, shorter movies, maybe anime, it still is good enough to kind of cast a larger screen onto the ceiling and kind of watch as you fall asleep. And of course, if you are, you know, maybe in a room where you don't have space for a larger TV, something like this can be very compact, taking up a ceiling or wall when you need it, and then just hiding it when you're done. Um, so, okay for just quick, casual use, I'd say. Alright, so pausing things there, again, watching back videos does alright, but for things like web browsing, it's not going to do quite as nicely, just because, again, with things like smaller text details, it's a little harder to make out because of the limited resolution that the native uh, 360p has to offer, especially for a smaller font, as you can see there. You really have to kind of zoom in in order to make it more legible. Uh, same thing goes with other documents and kind of PowerPoints. You can make out colors and shapes, but for small text details, it's not going to be the best. Speaking of, here's a quick sample clip of what kind of games would look like. Again, it supports a regular HDMI connection, so you can just plug in any Nintendo Switch, any console, PlayStation, Xbox, and it will just do the trick if you are traveling on the go, want to make it larger. It doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, though, on the default basic model of the C1, so if you want to extend the screen on your smartphone, you have to get a extension cable from Type-C or Lightning to HDMI, but those are pretty common. You can pick them up usually for about five bucks. It doesn't have a wireless Miracast option, though, unless you connect it to a Chromecast or something that supports screen sharing, so that's something to keep in mind. Or or you can pick up the smart model, again, which has Android and Wi-Fi built on in, that adds that functionality out of the box. A few final remarks here. This is basically how loud it sounds when it's turned on. There is a fan that prevents it from overheating, so there's a bit of white noise in the background. But it's not too bad when you're watching back a video, since again, the speakers are quite loud and kind of covers it up. Similar to, say, a desktop or a small fan in the background, that's the kind of volume that you'll be hearing. Now, finally, here's a quick comparison with some other small projectors like a DLP Pico projector for instance. Uh, this is more of a real pocket unit. It has a similar dimensions on the top uh, but you can see how it's going to be much slimmer because of the Texas Instrument chip used in Pico units but these are also more expensive typically selling for around $200 versus again this one here around 70 sometimes even less. So it's a fraction of that price uh, but in this case, you are also getting slightly reduced performance compared to a Pico unit. Here it is next to a smartphone, by the way, so you can see here it's still relatively pretty small though, so easy enough to kind of take with you when on the road. So that's more or less it for our hands-on review of the C1 portable projector unit. Overall, it has a very good build quality for the price, a very kind of cute, attractive, simple design, along with pretty solid speaker quality, surprisingly. And overall, it does a job for just watching quick clips and videos, although it's not the sharpest thing in the world. But for this low price, if you like the way it looks, I would say it does an okay job uh, just for projecting something quick onto the wall or ceiling. So you can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.